trace Volkswagen all the way back, and you get to this guy. In 1930s Germany, cars were a luxury, which didn't sit well with Hitler. He called for a Volkswagen, literally a people's car that an average family could afford. Borrowing a design from Ferdinand Porsche, the guy best known for these, the first Volkswagen rolled out of a state-owned factory in 1939. It looked pretty much like a Beetle. After the war, the heavily bombed factory started humming again when the British Army ordered 20,000 cars. Volkswagen exported its first car to the U.S. in 1949. A year later, it made its first van and started opening factories abroad. South Africa, England, Brazil, and Australia. Then, things really took off. In the 1960s, Volkswagen had an IPO in Germany, bought Audi, and rolled out a bunch of clever ads in the U.S. Think small. Herbie the Love Bug hit screens in 1968, boosting sales even further. Did you see this thing take off? You drive a Volkswagen? Sure. In the 1970s, Volkswagen came out with the Passat sedan, the tiny Golf, and the larger Jetta. It also started playing the green card. Riding comfort, excellent gas mileage, and low exhaust emissions. In the 1990s, Volkswagen went on a shopping spree, snapping up Seat, Skoda, Bentley, Bugatti, and Lamborghini. In 2009, it added Porsche after decades of collaboration. Today, Volkswagen makes roughly one out of every nine vehicles in the world, and it employs 600,000 people. Its annual revenue is slightly bigger than the GDP of Chile. More than anything else, it represents the contemporary car conglomerate. Volkswagen engines go in Audis, Audi chassis go under Porsches, and dealers can sell the whole family tree. It's clever corporate engineering, but it's also how one small issue can multiply into a disaster.